When you're deciding what you'll need for a day on the hill, start with the clothing you plan to wear. And I mean all of it, because on some days, especially in summer, you could end up stuffing most of it in your rucksack. If you're heading to a summit, don't forget gloves and a hat, even in August. And remember, the sun can still do a lot of damage to your skin on partly cloudy days. So remember to pack sunscreen, sun hat, sunglasses and a UV lip salve. Food's a big part of my mountain day. I usually dodge a fry up in the morning and go for something that's high in carbohydrates, like muesli. If I'm camping, it's got to be porridge. I never eat it at home, but on the hill, its energy levels are unbeatable. When it comes to eating on the move, personal choice is a big factor. I experiment with different foods to find out what suits my stomach when I'm active. Stopping for lunch is a high point of many walkers' days on the hill. But I find that eating small amounts of food on a frequent basis is more effective than a packed or pub lunch. Fatty foods make me feel sluggish. I stick to stuff that is high in carbs and save protein and fat-rich food for my evening meal. If you carry energy bars and gels, check the instructions carefully. Some need to be washed down with water. Staying hydrated is even more important than food. And just like food, drinking small amounts of fluid on a regular basis is the best way to take water on board. Sterilise your water using a few drops of iodine or use a filter or a purifier. I sometimes add a small amount of carbohydrate powder to plain water to decrease the time that my stomach takes to absorb the fluid. Add too much and it will extend the time, although you will get an increased amount of energy. It's worth experimenting to see what suits you best. I carry a flexible water bottle as well as a hard bottle. Now modern rucksacks like this one have these convenient sleeves into which you can slide a bladder and that also keeps the water away from the rest of your gear. Flexibles are a bit more prone to leaking than hard bottles but it is pretty rare and if it does leak I've always got that hard bottle to fall back on. Tubes are definitely the way to go as you don't need to spend any time stopping to fish out a water bottle from your pack. As well as essential gear like a map and a compass and a whistle and a survival bag, there's lots of other things you could carry with you on your day hike. Just remember, the more you carry, the heavier your pack will be, the more stress you're going to put on your back and shoulders and the longer your walk will take. There are three extra things I do carry. A small pen knife with scissors, a padded case to protect my camera from bumps and scrapes and a first aid kit with enough room for personal medication. Now, if your medicine is critical, you might want to think about giving a spare set to a friend in your group, in case yours becomes lost. Of course, there's no point in carrying that first aid kit if you don't know how to use it, so do think about attending a course on immediate care. And finally, it's time to choose the day sack. British and European rucksack capacities are measured in litres. Depending on how much kit you've amassed, you're probably looking at a rucksack with a capacity of between 20 and 40 litres. Side pockets come in and out of fashion. Personally, I think they're a bit fiddly on the hill, but some people like to keep things like food and gloves easily accessible. Some specialist models have internal dividers which enable you to compartmentalise your gear if you like to keep things organised. I want a simple day sack that's easy to get things in and out of. And I want a lightweight day sack too. If I'm only carrying half a dozen kilos of kit, there's no point in having a rucksack that weighs a third of the total amount. In an ideal world, your rucksack will only weigh 10% of the total amount you're going to carry. The bad news is that no matter how much money you spend on your rucksack, very few manufacturers seal the seams on their designs to guarantee water tightness. I'm using a waterproof liner and this allows me to store wet waterproof clothing between the liner and the rucksack. This rucksack has a mesh back and a contoured frame. That's great on a hot day because it allows air to circulate behind your back 
and if you need extra capacity, you can slip your flexible water bladder between the two. Now all day sacks have top entries. Some use a buckle system with drawstrings, but this one uses zips. But the most important feature of your rucksack isn't its colour or the number of compartments or even the size of its pockets. The most important feature is the fit. If you have a relatively short back, then you'll find that most day sacks will fit you. If you're tall, look for day sacks that come in multiple back lengths. That way, the hip belt will sit on your hips rather than across your midriff. You know, I think a comfortable rucksack is as important as a well-fitting pair of boots. When you do go into a store to try some on, put weight inside them to simulate the amount you'll be carrying on the hill. Cotswold stocks day sacks to fit all shapes and sizes and for all uses from climbing and skiing to walking and urban. Pop in for a chat or visit the website for more advice and information.